Hi, my name is Rachel G. Scott, host of Taking the Leap podcast and founder of the I Can't Come Down movement based here in Cleveland, Ohio. And today's verse of the day is Jeremiah 29, 11, and it reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I love this verse, but usually I focus more on the first part of the verse. However, more recently, my attention has been drawn to the second half, plans to give you hope and a future. Some versions say to give you an expected end. You know, every year I ask God for a word or a scripture to steward throughout that year. This year, he surprised me with not one, but two words, routine and expectancy. The first word, I'll admit, I need help with, but I was still surprised at how practical the word was. The second word, I found myself having a little hesitation with. Normally expectancy would be this exciting word, but as we all know, the last couple years have made it very difficult to expect much of anything outside of the unexpected. So when I received that word for the year, I wrestled with it. Kind of like the people who the prophet Jeremiah was talking to in this passage of scripture. They too had just come out of a very difficult season, Babylonian exile under King Nebuchadnezzar's rule. And they were hesitant when it came to planning for the future. God knew that they, just like many of us, had started to allow their experience to define their level of expectation. So he sent Jeremiah to encourage them to begin to live again and believe that God had good plans for them, which included restoring their hope for better days ahead. And he wants the same for you and I. God knows that life can make us battle weary, but he wants us to realize and believe that no matter what our situation is or was, he has good things planned. Nothing can change that. So I want to encourage you to begin to believe again that God's good plans will far exceed the discouragement or disappointment in your past. Be encouraged, family, and God bless. Amen and amen. Those who are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And today's verse of the day for the YouVersion Bible app, if you have yet to download it, the link will be in the description box down below. If you are new, you will notice that on my channel, there will be powerful scripture from the YouVersion Bible app and other apps that I do use with my biblical devotional. Today's verse of the day is Jeremiah 29, 11, where it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And so what I did find powerful on what she was sharing was routine and expectancy. And I really like what she had to say about it. But what I also noticed is when God puts a decree declare that means that is a stamp of approval it will come to pass if we have to align ourselves to understanding that in all that we're going through when god puts a declaration over your life it is done it was done when it was paid on the cross so when it says plans to prosper you and not to harm you it means that even when you're going through moments where you're trying to figure out, God, what is going on? Like, did you have you forsaken me? Have you forgotten me? No, it's not to harm you. It's to bring you closer to him. It's to give you further instructions. It's to build and create in you a, a version of you that you did not know you had. You say you want to love more. He's going to give you difficult pe pe people that the world feels that are unlovable. You say you want to give more. God will give you, put you in situations where you give in moments that you you didn't want you normally you wouldn't give you want to be able to have faith in God God will put you in moments and obstacles by not your might by not by your wisdom but by God that is within you to strengthen you and guide you and lead you forward and pushing you forward into faith understanding and full utterance of understanding that God Almighty is the one that is leading you to prosper and that is the hope and 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 you know when when I see the word hope it used to be this thing how in the world how the world see hope as uh maybe but when God writes hope it is something for me how I see it it is something where against all odds you hold on to me you're holding on to more than you ever can comprehend hope when god when you see the word hope isn't the hope that the world sees it's an unbinding 
beyond expectancy abundance not in the abundance of financial because everybody's in this prosperity gospel we're talking about what matters in the eyes and in the kingdom of god and so let's get into today's reflection question it says how can you trust in god's plan for your life today it says i can talk to god and express my trust in him and you know a lot of times when we are going through things and we're going through ups and downs and don't make sense it does not hurt to tell god your frustrations to share with him because God is God is a God that knows your wants and needs. He loves to be in communication with his creation, his children. He loves to hear you speak and share and come to him. You, when you have your ups and downs and you come to your loved ones, they can they can see it, they can feel it at times of what you're going through. But the fact that you can come to them and you share with them makes them feel like, wow, out of everyone, you come to me. And I love that. And this is what the wisdom I'm going to share with you. This is the solution, I think, if I were you in your position. And, and it's that moment of feeling like, though my child never speaks to me as much as they used to when they were a kid. I used to be there everything when I, they were a kid. But I know that when they're going through things that don't make sense, they know me. They remember me. They come to me. They don't go to anybody else. And that's who God is. That's what God loves about communion. Then the next one says, I can act on what I believe God is calling me to do in life. And I say in this, it is so true. But remember to practice discernment. Ask God for his wisdom. Read through his word. Pray and test the spirit because not everything that is coming is coming from God. So you must test the spirit. A child of God tests the spirit. They test everything they see. They stay in the garden. They wait for the Lord. They wait for the Lord to give his divine authority and next step of what you should do, what you should say. May go through your fast, go through your prayer. Do not cease in praying come together in community, come together, even if you don't have a community, if you don't have those of God to come together in prayer, you have Jesus who has promised to never forsake you. And there you see his promise was not to harm you, but to give you a plan, a godly plan that will purify you, that will a divine plan that will prosper you. And the next one is, I can find comfort in what I read in God's word when my future seems unclear. Every day when it says, in God, when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, and they say, seek your daily bread. Jesus Christ, we see in the word, it speaks about thirst, an undying, quenching thirst. And that's why every time we bring things into our lives, we think it'll bring us satisfaction, but it doesn't. But God gives you complete satisfaction. That's why when you find those that are in Christ, you're like, they're never the same. Those that are rooted in Christ are never the same because we are always aching and seeking for that thirst. And the hunger that we also have is in the word of God. And in the word of God, we find divine direction, not worldly direction, because that is so confusing. It will lead you in one place. It's so crazy how in the world you got multitudes of ways that leads you to one place. But God has a narrow, straight, well-lit path that leads you straight to him. God is not a God of confusion. God is not a God of hopelessness. God is a God of love, stability, consistency, and it's not in the way the world thinks consistency, love, prosperity. It is beyond our comprehension. And you start to understand it and God starts to show you when you walk with him, when you read his word, when you know him, when you ask questions, he has no issues with you asking questions. Never cease in speaking to God. Never cease in reading the word. Because trust and believe the enemy knows the Bible like the back of his hand. And he uses that against those who don't remain in Christ, who don't read the word, who don't seek their daily bread, who, who think of hope in the way the world does, but not the way God says it, who forgets what God's declaration and promises are over your life based upon what we view the world says a declaration is, what love is 
what what prosperity is. And so with that, I'm going to say I can find comfort in what I read in God's word when I when my future seems unclear. Hope in the midst of pain. James W. Gall. Devotional. Anybody got a roadmap? <laughs> let me save this. Let me let us read. It is impossible to travel safely in a pitch blackness unless you have some kind of navigation system when you are going through a dark night of of the soul. It may take a while before you remember that God is your guide and that he wants you to have his help. Let me tell you something. God has created you to not walk this life alone. You were created to not live a life without him. That is what the devil that is why the devil is the father of lies cuz he makes you think you don't need God. You just need you. You need what is in this world. But what is crazy is what is what God God from heaven created you and created everything on this earth and gave you full domination over it. And so if you have full domination over it in order to remain and dominate over it is it comes from God from above who created you to need him and it's not the kind of need that you think the world views the need it's a whole different kind of need it's uh, God completes us he rescues our story he's the renewer of our souls he sanctifies us he purifies us that is who God is And when we are broken, when we are lost, when we are confused, he shines a bright light in a dark world. And through his words, he guides us. You cannot rely on your memory of what God is like. God's word is the complete road map for yesterday, today and tomorrow. But you have to look at the map right now. It is not good enough to have looked at it five or ten years ago. Re-examine what it says each day. Stick to it and follow its direction. And I'm telling you that it's so important because there are times, just like today's verse, when you read Jeremiah 29:11. Every time when you're going through it and you're reading the scripture, you will see there are different parts that Holy Spirit will highlight and show you what God is trying to tell you. when he is guiding you. So the first thing is to run to God. He is your refuge. He is your stronghold of hope. He is always there for you. All you have to do is turn to him and and say, "Here I am." When you read John 6:68 and Psalms 103, then we go on to run to a trusted community. seek help and comfort from family and friends if you feel you don't have friends like the ones who carries the man in a cot to Jesus mark 24 luke 5:19 you do have the greatest friend in the world and Jesus is right with you day and night ask him to come to you and for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with mark and luke this is a man that is crippled This is a man that because everyone is is hungry and eager to hear from the son of God and wants to hear because they've never heard such words such such way of thinking such way of living that his friends want him to be healed that they put him in a cot they go onto the roof they put a hole and they ask they put a hole in lure him down to Jesus at the foot of Jesus as he is preaching this man just like the man in the bible was wrestling i will not go just like the woman that was bleeding for years if i were just to touch uh, him i know i will be healed this is the friends that this man has and this is the friends and this is the community you need to have the ones that will pray for you and never stop praying the ones that will fast on the behalf of you and not only that they will do this for for you but you would do it for them these are children of god worship god with your questions 
Worship him by trusting him with your biggest, messiest questions. He wants you to do this, whether you bring him some big philosophical question or some emotional, laden, practical thing. There is nothing too big. When God said, when God and the Son of God said, cast all your cares, your anxiety, everything, cast them upon me. He means it. There's nothing too small or too big. God is there to restore every aspect of your life. So for him to to restore everything you have to have him have all full domination in and over your whole entire life not particular parts all of them and forgiveness forgive forgive others for trying to fix you and forgive yourself for failing to meet self-imposed expectations forgiveness is a choice and no one can do it for you but practicing forgiveness leads directly to a restoration of hope, period. Forgiveness is hard because we live in a world where you fool me once, I'm done with you. But when we forgive, we forgive because God first forgave us. God, the Father, put all of his anger and frustration and rage onto his son and crushed his son on the cross for every wrong that we have done onto his own son and his son took it all for us to be adjointed to him so we can be purified and clean in the eyes of the father that is who Jesus is that is who Jesus is so when he says in the scripture I am speaking the truth about our sins, about our imperfections, about hell, about why he's here, why he is saving us, why he is the son of God and why he comes here and the New Testament, the, the new covenant. So let us begin in prayer. Father, instead of masking my pains, I bring it to you. I choose to worship you with my questions. I believe that Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. In fact, Lord, I know you have come to heal the brokenhearted and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. I present my past, my present, and all that I hope to be my future to you. I choose to believe that you have a hope-filled plan. In fact, Lord God, I know you have a godly plan and holy plan, a set-apart plan for the rest of my entire life. Gracious Lord Jesus, thank you and amen. And we will continue keeping our eyes closed because there is a prayer. And this prayer is a prayer of thanks for hope and the future. Since I have already saved it, Lord, I declare, God, before the world was formed, you have a plan for my life. You have always wanted me to live in hope of your good plan. Please help me to have patience when your plans don't seem clear. Give me the faith to trust that you are working. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen, Lord. God, I thank you. And as we say, guys, let me tell you, this, this app is tremendous. It does above and beyond. It helps you understand scripture and there's so many varieties of translation in it, in it to help you comprehend it in a way that God is speaking to you and speaking to what is trying to hinder you, what is trying to break from you, what the father of lies is trying to steal from you. So I say, if you like this video, please like, share it, comment and save it. Uh, and whether it's my channel or others, please continue to sit, share the good news of God. And I thank you guys for watching. God bless and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed day.